What's up you beauties? My name is Bad Chat Begins, and we are back again with another great tank review. Today we're taking a look at the Behemoth at tier 10, the T110E3. This thing is an amazing tank destroyer, and it is quickly becoming one of my favorites. Why is that, you ask? Well, this thing is practically impervious hauled down, and with its decent gun, I wouldn't say great because it does have some accuracy problems at long range, I think this thing is an absolute monster at this point because they've increased the max speed and they've also given it the super speed boost and I think that makes this thing a lot more mobile and a lot more effective than it used to be. Now as you'll see on screen I've put some statistics both for the gun, for the engine, and I'll also go ahead and put up my equipment loadout. Now for consumables, it's pretty simple. You can see it there on screen. I run double repair kit because this thing, it's one nemesis is being tracked and I also run the super speed boost. I don't think you really need adrenaline with this tank because you're not really in any danger of uh, losing any HP. You, you basically just sit there with your armor pointed towards the enemy that is the most threatening and at this moment that's the 215B and the Kronmung and you just reload your gun. So I don't really think you need adrenaline in this kind of scenario. You're you're basically just a frontliner. And as you can see, it does sometimes hit those tricky shots, but the majority of the time at long range, it's a 50-50 whether you're going to hit the weak spot that you're aiming for. So what does that mean for the E3? Well, that means for any practical purposes, you're needing to be a mid to close range fighter, a brawler. And as you can see, I'm trying to turn my tank but unfortunately the Yeager was still going forward so I wasn't able to turn my tank quite in time. I might have been able to get an HE shot in early but you're going to see how I like to play the E3 and that is sort of this front line brawler and I'm gonna go ahead and try to go take advantage of this grill. We do however get surprised by the leopard showing up. I guess he intended to flank our team but the good news is we're in a prime position for the E3. We have cover to our right with this rocky berm, and we also are moderately hauled down to the leopard, meaning that we're showing most of our strong frontal armor. Now, at this point, I have the HP, so I'm just going to go ahead and push around the corner right into this grill. And what do you know? Just like I said, the gun's a little bit inconsistent. It shoots below the grill and in to his right tracks, meaning that I only get splash damage from the grill. Most of the time, when you're driving the E3 on the move, it does sort of do those wonky shots like that. So it is best to go ahead, get your composure, and hit the shot that you're aiming for. What are we doing right now? Well, we have the HP, so we need to go ahead, get in the battle, get in this brawl, and start being a help for our teammates. As you can see, the Jaeger and I have hit our shots. We've effectively taken the mouse down from a three shot to a one shot and we're going to go ahead and finish him off. Now, you can see, I'm not running calibrated on this tank. As I said, I think the high pin TDs don't really need calibrated. They tend to do fine with rammer, and I think this tank is a good example of that. Even with rammer, you're not even hitting the 3K mark in this tank, but if you are using rammer, you get up to about 2,900 DPM, which makes it usable in my eyes, and you can still do what this tank is best at, which is going ahead, using your armor, using your speed now, getting to the front line, and you still have a respectable amount of DPM and penetration with Rammer. We go ahead, we get a 5k game, making use of that early game hold down presence versus those heavies, and then we're able to flank, push away a medium tank, and kill the grill and the mouse towards the late game, which sealed the victory for us. That was a pretty decent game, but we are going to show a much better game, and that is Kiniatsu Hater in his T110E3 here on the Dead Rail map. Now, Kenny is a longtime friend of the channel, and I've been meaning to feature this replay for a while. I just had to get a replay of my own to go along with it, so I could make this a little bit better of an example of how to play this tank. Now, as you can see, he's running a little bit different of a loadout than I am. He is running the aim time consumable on the E3, which I honestly think is a pretty good idea. I might have to try that for myself, but I do find that when I'm in those close, tight, brawling situations with the E3, that having two repair kits is a lot better because it does let you get away from those sticky circumstances where you might be fighting multiple heavies or multiple enemies in general and you need to get away and you've been tracked multiple times. So definitely a difference in loadout, but let's see if there is a difference in playstyle. As you can see, Kenny's not sitting at the back. He's actually up towards the middle supporting his team 
and basically being a midline fighter, which I said is a really good thing to do in this tank. And as you can see, it is going to pay off in the long run. That E100 is on the other side at the moment, but we've been spotted. Potentially it was a proxy spot. It might not have been. We might have just been barely spotted by the TD in the back. But those little details don't matter right now because Kenny is exercising some patience. He is waiting to take advantage of any enemy tank here that has made a mistake of pushing too aggressively. And hopefully he'll be able to catch them in a crossfire. He's eyeing up the medium tanks, seeing if he can potentially get a shot there. Maybe thinking about pushing on the E100. He is still eyeing up the tortoise. And I do believe he got shot by the WZ earlier, so it's good to keep that in mind so that you do not over-engage. Right now, like I said, tanks that are making mistakes. That would be the E100. He pulled out a little bit too aggressively, and Kenny was able to go ahead and help the KPZ go ahead and take him out. That's good. A tier 10 heavy tank already taken down. We're playing this a little bit slow for my taste because I am quite the aggressive player, but you're going to see that this will pay off in the long run. And as you can see, Kenny is still very conscious of the TD that is in the back spot, but that lets him turn, use his map awareness to go ahead and assist his allies on the hill. They've gone ahead and cleared the medium side, which is great. That means they can start to make their way towards the heavy side and start dealing with those pesky TDs sitting at the back. Speaking of TDs, he is going ahead and approaching the tortoise, which I'm kind of confused why he's not firing right now. Not Kenny, that is. The tortoise. And you'll see in a couple seconds why the tortoise is struggling a little bit, and that is because my guy here is um, sitting in the open, and he's running the stock gun, which not a great gun to contest a E3 with, that is for sure. And um, as you can see, this is a situation where if there was multiple enemies, I would want to be running multiple repair kits because uh, you can definitely get permatract in this thing, and that will lead to uh, problems. Taking a little bit of damage, which isn't great. Uh, you kind of want to save that for these late game engagements, especially since we have three tanks and the enemy has four tanks, but we are able to go ahead and clear the tortoise, which is great. I do like that Kenny was patient and he waited for his aiming circle. That is really important in the E3 because this tank does tend to throw shots way wide of the aiming circle if you aim it partially and not fully. But the good news is we have the more important side of the map locked down at this point. As you can see, Kenny is sitting next to the cap circle, so all the friendly team really needs to do is let Kenny stay here, start dealing with the tanks that are approaching the cap circle, and he can pick them off one by one in these close range engagements, which are very suited for the E3. But instead, um, the Sheridan gets a little bit gung-ho, and he goes ahead and rushes the two TDs that are sitting in the back, which were obviously going to outspot him and kill him very easily. So this puts us in a bit of a dire situation here. There are two TDs which aren't a one-shot and a full health conqueror, and it's going to take some really, really good positioning to go ahead and get ourselves out of this mess. The Conqueror gets spotted to our right, and as you can see, trying to angle up, but the side of the E3 does not have a ton of armor, so we're going to have to go ahead and face hug, but <laughs> uh, there's really no need to, um, there's really no need to stress when you could just go ahead and Amorak the Conqueror, you know? Why not? But uh, great shot there. As you can see, everybody in-game is kind of playing it off and being good sports about it, but that really does bring the situation a bit closer. So now, the friendly team have the advantage. They have the positioning, and they've got the hit points. And even though Kenny doesn't have a ton of hit points, he's still got a lot of armor. And the enemy TDs he's coming up against, well, they can't really make use of that armor on the outside like this. They have to uh, stay unspotted, which the Conway here is, is not doing. So, the good news is, our friendly TD is starting to get into gear and flank this Conway, which is great news because that means Kenny is going to have some support. And that is important because this guy has a lot of health and TDs have a lot of penetration, so he's definitely going to need the support. So you can see the Conway has gone ahead and traded with the grill. So Kenny is going to go ahead and risk it and approach the Conway. As you can see, E3, just a little bit of a slow tank and uh, he doesn't want to get shot from the Conway. That shell sounded like the Conway missing and that was the sweet ping of the armor finally working against the WZ. So, 
Kenny is going to do what every TD driver loves to do, and that is load HE on lightly armored targets, and they manage to two-shot the Conway, leaving only the WZ-113GFT in the back alone versus two enemy TDs. And this is a good situation. All that Kenny has to do right now is just trundle his way on out there because it's unlikely that the WZ is going to be able to one-shot him. And it's pretty obvious where the WZ is. You know, his only chance was to get a significant high roll onto Kenny. But uh, it looks like that's not going to be the case today. Kenny takes down a massive game here in the E3. And very well played to you, sir. That is 6,900 damage. Almost 7K. Very, very well done. He pretty much single-handedly locked down the middle of the map, which is what I said was a great option to do. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more content coming for you soon. All the relevant links to the Discord, the Patreon, the email are down in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I still see your shadows in my room. Can't take back the love that I gave you. It's to the point why I love